Okay, everybody. Uh, this is David Sarita. I'm here to talk about the Great American Eclipse and the incredible coincidences of the Great Triangle and the the three dates. This is being recorded for replay because apparently StreamYard is having problems with Facebook today, um, yesterday and today. I'm not sure if we're even on Facebook right now, but um, this this is um, replayed so that people can share it. Um, so everybody knows about the eclipse coming up on April 8th, but there's a lot they don't know that I'm going to be sharing. So I'm going to go first to my graphic that has the, um, the revelations appearing in it. And um, so we can... We can start with that. Um, present, share screen, entire screen. Um, oh, somebody's commented they were seeing us on Facebook, so we're good, it looks like. Okay, uh, window. Uh, I'm just looking at this share screen. It's not. It's not letting me share entire screen. Oh, you have to click entire screen. Okay, so yeah. here we go. This is, this is, can you see the graphics, Rose? Yeah. Okay, so these are the three eclipses. And I noticed that nobody had made note of these dates and what they actually mean. So the first um, eclipse, August 21st, 2017. I want to point out, firstly, that that is Jesus' birthday, according to the Arantia book, Astrology. And the I'm, I'm just going to show the abstract really quick, and then I'm going to go into greater detail. And last year's eclipse on October 23rd is the anniversary of Fatima, the 1917, October 13th, apparition of the sun, which was caused by an annual eclipsing of an unknown planet in the solar system. And I'm going to fulfill that statement. Notice it's October 14th and it was October 13th. But every, um, in 1917, we were on the Gregorian calendar. So we shifted from Gregorian, from Julian calendar. Are you seeing what I'm clicking on right now, um, Shiroz? I just need to know. Are you, are you just seeing the graphic? Um, so anyway, the Julian calendar day of October 4th, 1582 was immediately, because that was the date of the shift from Julian to Gregorian. Notice it's 1582, the end of the 16th century. It immediately became Friday, October 15th. And actually, St. Teresa of Avila dies on this exact moment of the switching of Julian to Gregorian, which brings us to mid-October. So that's very, very important what the mid-October date means because the second eclipse of mid-October, which happened last year, is the anniversary of Fatima. And even though in the Gregorian calendar today, we have a leap year, which we just had this past February, where you add a day, because a year in perfect sidereal timekeeping, which is not 100% perfect, you get um, 365.256, and the decimals keep going days per year. And those extra decimals past the um, 25, which is a quarter of a year, which means every four years you have to add a day, there, those more decimals add up to another day about every 135 years. So we're about 107 years since Fatima. So hence, October 14th is the anniversary of Fatima, which again is a, a perfect alignment that has never been explained by astronomers ever properly. They believe that over 60,000 people who are witnesses to what appears to be descriptions of an annular eclipse which is where a ring of fire um, 
surrounds the moon corona shadow um, aligning up between the sun and the earth. And most of the descriptions match that, except there was no lunar solar alignment that day. And there was also no Venus transit that day. So there must be theoretically an unknown body in our solar system. I'm going to go really into this today. And thirdly, the April 8th eclipse coming up was the date for Easter in 1917, the same year as the Fatima miracle of the sun. And why that matters, why do all three dates coincide with Jesus in this great triangle that is, is coming to its, its completion on April 8th? In fact, so if I go here, if you see my screen, we can see, are you seeing the my text here? I just need to know if people are seeing my text because I don't know. Um, Easter 1917 was April 8th. And when you when you go on a lunar calendar, so we <clears throat> at the time of Christ, we were on a Julian calendar. Can you hear so, me, David? Yes, you can see your dates. Okay, good. So this is an example of what Easter looked like in 1917. It was April 8th, which is the day of our eclipse. And every 12 years, you'll come back to April 8th, except for if it lines up on a leap year. <clears throat> but then again, <clears throat> you have to add about every 130 years or so, you have to add another day, which is why, because we're over 100 years since Fatima, that <clears throat> the, the last eclipse ended up being on October 14th instead of October 13th. Now, watch what happens here when you understand this triangle being formed, this miraculous triangle. And I went, I mean, this is an accurate map of the crossing of these eclipses. So last year's eclipse coming in from, you know, um, uh, the state of Oregon, sweeping down through the lower Midwest of the United States, ends at the Great Pyramid of Chichen Itza, El Castile, in the Yucatan, and then goes out into the Yucatan. So very, very interesting, too, because the eclipse that's going to be starting on April 8th will also go through a series of pyramids in the Yucatan where you see this X. But this is actually, see, this, this is what you have to understand when you look at different calendars. So if I look at calendars, that, and this is really miraculous as well, because um, we see that Yom Kippur, I can actually show you this in a graph, which is the most holy day for the Jewish people every year, on a lunar calendar will periodically align to the middle of October. In this, in this kind of sine wave that, that it actually creates. So I can actually show you what that looks like here when I can find my right um, screenshots here. Here's a screenshot of, that's, that's Jesus's Ascension Day, which is another date that I mapped. I just gotta find, I've gotta find Yom Kippur. This might be it. There it is, so Yom Kippur. Because you're going to see this other date, why we come to mid-October, October 12th, October 13th. And those who, of you who have followed my earlier presentation, earlier um, in the year, I talked about the discovery of a mysterious um, planet between Venus and Mercury with a period orbit of 139 Earth days per orbit. And that is called planet 139. So we note in the Bible also, the, um, <clears throat> the Bible mentions the word heaven 278 times in the New Testament, which in the Greek is Uranus, which is, which is what we named the planet um, Uranus, Uranus with. But nevertheless, 278 days divided by two is 139. Why that matters is October 12th, October 13th is the miracle of the sun at Fatima. So that gives us an alignment of a hypothetical planet 
that is the cause of the miracle of the sun at Fatima, October 13th, 1917. So it turns out that Yom Kippur, when you chase it, which is like chasing a cat's tail on a lunar calendar and, and corresponding the lunar calendar back to our modern Gregorian calendar, it also, you can see in my chart, lines up with mid-October, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times in 12 years. So why is that? Why does that keep happening? So remember, when we come to eclipse number two, which has a date of October 14th in the current Gregorian calendar, that's the anniversary of the alignment of planet 139. Now, the reason this is important is when you understand the, the way what are called transits of Mercury, which are quite, quite, so a transit is when the planet Mercury or the planet Venus, so are the two only known planets between the, the Earth and the Sun, that line up between the earth and the sun and the, their shadow will migrate across the earth just like an eclipse but it will produce a much smaller shadow during its transit and if you're right in the center of that shadow you will experience something similar to an annular eclipse but it's but it's different so the question is because astronomers never identified, according to the witness who, who saw a disk that was cloud-like but yet opaque, blocking the sun at Fatima, no one ever explained what it was. In fact, when I checked what are called Venus transits, Venus transits are, are quite rare. So if I go to my, I just have to find it here, my Venus transit um, chart. Um, oh my God, this is really going to blow your mind what I'm going to show you here in a minute. So remember, October 13th is Fatima 1917. I want to show you this. Guess what date the cornerstone was laid in the White House in 1792? And 1792 is 125 years before Fatima, October 13th. And the master masons who built the White House must have known the secret of planet 139 because every, two orbits of 139 starting from the, the, uh, the date of December 25th, which is three days after the winter solstice, to mark the beginning of the new solar year, which is when modern Christians celebrate Christmas, which is not really Christmas, but we'll get into that in a minute. Why did they lay the chief cornerstone? Remember, Jesus said, I am the, I am the, I am the chief stone in the corner that the builders rejected. So M Master Masons, to lay the, the cornerstone of the White House on the same date as the miracle of the sun at Fatima, but 125 years before. Why is that important? Because they knew they knew about planet 139's alignment. They were master masons that go way back, way, way back, before the founding fathers and before the founding of the United States of America. They knew about planet 139. And in fact, if I take the Washington Monument, and, and we're going to come back full circle here in a minute, the Washington Monument is the height of the Washington Monument. I'm just looking for where I have the note on that in here is 555 point something feet divided by four comes to just under 139 as in the four cardinal directions or the four um, corners of the four seasons. So, again, we see evidence of the 139 in the Washington Monument, and now we see it in the founding stone being laid in the building of the White House. But, to, but 125 years before. So watch. If I go to my Venus transits, 
So we'll go to here. I'll just have to do this because I lost it. Okay, I'm gonna Google Venus Trans Venus Transit. So I go to my Venus Transit of Venus, and the transits of Venus, right? So the seventh of December. 1631 and the 4th of December, 1639, they come in pairs. And the pairs are then separated by a great period of time. So the last Venus transit we have is 8th of June, 2004, and then 5th to 6th of June, 2012. But then we won't get another one until 2117 and then the second one in the pair 2125 you see they're only years apart and when you understand how transits are are only years apart you understand that in the miracle of the sun at fatima we had a pair sighting of the miracle of the sun at fatima and that paired sighting was witnessed by the Pope. And that was, I'm just looking for the date here um, of the alignment when the when which Pope saw it, which was okay, so right here. Here we go. So I'm going to show you a couple of alignments here that line up to this mysterious date of October 12, 13, 14, 15. Columbus discovers America October 12, 1492. Okay. Now that's that's miraculous. But Saint the Saint Francis dies on October 4th. Um, but which is actually today, October 15th, in our current Gregorian calendar. So remember the miracle of the sun at Fatima is Gregorian calendar because. In 1917, we were on Gregorian calendar. So on Gregorian calendar, which is more accurate than Julian calendar, which is more accurate than the lunar calendar, because if, if you follow the lunar calendar today, oh my God, you, you would not have a perfect alignment to the North Star and the what's called the tropical year of the planet earth traveling around the sun and maintaining the perfection of the four seasons i mean there's people who would argue that but you really really wouldn't when you look at the math the way i have so again saint francis dies in the exact moment of the alignment of two orbits of planet 139 which is an alignment with the miracle of the sun at fatima saint Teresa of avila dies exactly the day we switch from julian to gregorian which is October 4th becomes October 15th, 1582. And then we see the miracle of the sun at Fatima, October 13th, 1917. So you see what's happening here. And then, of course, Vatican uses October 12th, not the 13th, 1962, to create the Vatican Council, or what's known as Vatican II. And then... My apparition of Christ, my first one, happened in mid-October 1994, which is in perfect alignment. John Denver dies October 12, 1997, which is perfectly in alignment. And then the Amuamua um, mysterious interstellar object, which phys Harvard physicist Avi Lowe believes was extraterrestrial, was discovered October 19th. So you're still in high alignment to two orbits of planet 139. And then it gets more interesting because May 13th or mid-May, because of calendar shifting, is one orbit of planet 139. And mid May 13th was the date that the, the Mother Mary appeared to the three children at Fatima the first time. She appears to them May 13th, 1917, and then she appears on the 13th of the month until the final event of the solar phenomenon on the sun, which was October 13th, 1917. So we see all these other alignments that happen in mid-May, right, that, that, are, that are documented here. So with that, we come to 
we come to um, back to our. I'll come back to our graphic for a second here. Our main our main graphic in the presentation. We come back to this. We come to this. So we have Jesus's birthday being August twenty first, according to the study that led to the discoveries of his birthday, August 21st. Um, now, this is really, really mind-blowing, what I'm going to show you next, because the, the date of the real Christmas in the oldest church has been January 6th and 7th. January 6th and 7th. I mean, everybody knows what January 6th means, right? Because that's the date of the capital insurrection. But what happened when the Roman church was forming, which wasn't solidified until 5th, 6th century after Christ, which is when the English language is just coming into being, the, the Orthodox church celebrated Christmas on January 6th, 7th. Now, the very first church that we know of is the brother of Jesus, James, started the first actual church in Jerusalem, which is Orthodox, and they stated in the original Matthew that the Christing of Jesus, which is the, the Greek word for Messiah, which is the anointing of the Holy Spirit by John the Baptist and Jesus' baptism, when the Holy Spirit fully came into Jesus, he became Christ. So Christ Mass Day was December 25th, but that was Julian calendar. Guess what you have to do when you switch, when you look at what happened when we switched from, when we switched, um, this isn't the document I wanted to show you. Um, when we switched, we had to go forward 11 days. So when we had to go forward 11 days, you go from January um, 7th and you go forward, uh, so December 25th, and you go forward 11 days, you come to January 6th and 7th. So that's what I'm saying. The real Christmas is January 6th and 7th. Now watch what happens here. So when you go to... Um, August 21st plus 139 days for the orbit of planet 139, you come to January 7th, which is Orthodox Christmas Day, which again was the real Christmas Day. And even the earliest Romans celebrated on the Julian calendar Christmas Day, December 25th. But they never adjusted when we went to Gregorian calendar and added the 11 days, which would bring you to January 6th and 7th. They didn't do that. So notice August 21st plus 139 days is January 7th. And then if I add another 139 days to that, we come to the Ascension Day of Jesus, which is 40 days after Easter, May 25th, right? So guess what? You come here. April 8th, which was Easter when this perfect, invisible, and undetectable, probably cloaked planet, either by antimatter or by some type of very advanced energy field, to cause the, the miracle of the sun at Fatima. If you go to April 8th, and you, and you count 40 days forward. So just go April 8 plus 40 days because Jesus' ascension date is you have May 18th. So there you go. You're, you're right in, you're right in mid-May, which is where you should be. Four, because when did the mother Mary appear to the three children at Fatima? She appeared May 13th. So you're you're right in mid-May. And remember, that shifts a little bit each year, depending on your leap year on our current calendar. So what I'm saying is we if we 
we really mark the time accurately, we wouldn't, the, the real date of Easter, according to what this eclipse is telling us, is April 8th, and it should always be April 8th, and the Ascension Day should always be mid-May. But you still have to adjust your leap here, and every 130 years you have to adjust another date. So why did these three eclipses show this? And this and and the and the mother load is coming here in a few seconds. Why do they, why do three eclipses show this? These dates that they're not abstract, meaningless dates. So now I I, I took my protractor and I did this three times because I wanted to measure this the angle the slope angle of my triangle. So I bring my protractor into the left upper corner here. And I, I checked three times. I'm right at 26.3 degrees. And what does that mean? You're not going to believe what that means. So all of our planets, all of our planets are tilted. And the tilt angle of Earth at 23.5 degrees gives us the precession, the 25,000 plus a year actual precession. So... And we add all the degree angles of all the planets, 120 degrees for Pluto, Neptune, 28.5, Uranus, 98 degrees, which is the steepest angle in the solar system, Saturn, 26.7. Saturn really interests me because of 26.7. Jupiter, 3 degrees. Ceres, 4 degrees. Ceres is a planet. It's a dwarf planet, but it's a planet. And I, I'm including Pluto. Yes, I am, because astronomers still disagree about it. Mars is 25 degrees, Earth 23.5, Venus 3, Mercury 2. I add them all up. They come to 333.7. And as soon as I saw this, I knew exactly what it meant. Because in Peter and Missouri's Great Pyramid Decoded, the Grand Gallery Ascending Passage is 26.3 degrees. It's the missing piece in the puzzle. So that means if... If all of these angles represent a planet, 26.3 degrees has to represent a missing planet in the solar system because they all add up with 26.3 degrees added to 337, the total of the visible planets in the solar system, we have 360 degree perfect circle. That's incredible. It's unbelievable. So inversely, would 26.3 degrees be the slope angle of missing planet 139 and you go back to here and you look at this triangle wedge that is the same slope angle it's the same slope angle it's incredible so let me stop my sharing because you're getting you're getting all these so if you go in Le Miserere's book, he has it recorded right here, the slope angle of the Grand Gallery. And the Grand Gallery leads you into the King and Queen's Chamber. And the, the Queen's Chamber is the same measurement as Moses' original, original Holy of Holies. So when the tabernacle where the Ark of the Covenant is placed in the Holy of Holies and the staffs of the 12 tribes are placed in the Holy of Holies is extended by another rectangular tent called the Holy Place, which is 10 by 20 royal cubits, is the same measurement as the second tent in the tabernacle, which is called the Holy Place. So why are the dimensions the same? And if we look in the book of Ezekiel, a cubit of God is a cubit plus a handbreadth, which is a royal cubit. So, so that would mean the Great Pyramid doesn't belong. It's not attributable to the Egyptian religion. It's attributable to the God, the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible is a perfect measure. Everything, everything is measured perfectly. So I'm, I'm showing you why the triangle of the three eclipses has the same slope angle as ascending the ascending grand gallery in the great pyramid of Egypt. I, I, I'm showing you it because those three angles in the eclipse 
equal the connections to see there's your 26.3 degree angle you can check it with the protractor i mean it's right there it's right there so why is this i mean i'm so stumped by this at this point that if nothing happens either and here's what i predict and when you predict something when i predict something i'm predicting it mathematically i'm saying that i'm looking at two dates following this eclipse that could be immensely powerful may 13th i would say may 11th to the later part of may is the first window because that's one orbit of planet 139 and the second date is October 13th, 14th, also to the end of October, is, is two orbits of 139. Because this alignment is, it's impossible that this math is correct. April 8th is the real Easter. It was Easter in 1917, the same year as the miracle of the Senate Fatima. And the miracle of the Senate Fatima is caused by planet 139 alignment. And... And, and I'm trying to remember which pope it was. Pope, pope Gregory sees the same miracle of the sun. Um, I think it's, um, it's a matter of years later. It's not very long later. I just can't find that document. I will find it and show it to you as we're talking here. And you can, you can clearly see that this can't be a coincidence. It just can't be. I'm going to show you my graphic of planet 139, what it looks like. I need to show you that so you can see it. And I've, I've shown this before, but share screen, window, entire screen. There we go, entire screen. So we go here. So this is my chart. I've showed it before, and we see my wife, Crystal Sarita, called out my name 591 days after she died. So if I take 591 divided by the golden ratio, I get exact, exact sidereal time for Earth. Divided by the golden ratio again, I get Venus's orbit. Divided by the golden ratio again, I get 139.51, right, which is... St. Francis' Ascension Day, two orbits. Miracle of the Sun at Fatima, two orbits. And Jesus' Ascension Day, one orbit. Ascension Day is 40 days after um, Easter. John Denver's Ascension Day. And actually, one orbit of the celebrated birthday of the Buddha, it lines up with planet 139, which is incredible. And then also the... Um, the first date that the mother Mary appears to the three children at Fatima is May 13th, which lines up to one orbit of 139 harmonics. So we can see I divided by the golden ratio again, and I get Mercury. And then when I multiply 591 by the golden ratio, I get, you know, high 90s, 97% um, or greater accuracy to the outer planets, but it includes multiple heaven planets, which I believe are in an antimatter state, which would cloak them because their electrons and protons and all their constituent subatomic particles are spinning opposite to us right now. So that means that that means that when you see something like Yom Kippur lining up with with two orbits of planet 139, you see all these alignments all coming together. And you see that the founding stone of the White House, October 13th, 125 years before Fatima. See, you 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 have to understand there's you can't have that many coincidences for it to be a slip chance. Yes, if I had one chance here and there, I wouldn't I wouldn't say there's anything happening here. But again, look at the data. Just look at it. Look at the data. Look at the triangle. And tell me this is all just a coincidence. I mean, you can believe whatever you want. 
I, I believe mathematical coincidences are are real, really real. And so, yes, if, if you believe that the reason they're going to start up CERN April 8th, which has been asleep for a very long time, and NASA's launching three rockets in the Trail of the Shadow, I believe the three rockets being launched in the Trail of the Shadow are to obscure the, the moment of totality and near totality so that if, if, if Planet 139 appears, they don't want anybody to see it. See, what, what you, the people who don't get this is you can go back to the eyewitnesses of the Miracle of the Sun at Fatima in 1917. No, there was no solar lunar eclipse on that date. They know that. There was no Venus transit on that date. Something obliterated the sun to create the phenomenon. And it, is it possible? Yes, physicists today agree, half of them, that there can be antimatter planets. Absolutely they do. Because when antimatter was discovered, they realized that that a antimatter planet and antimatter persons could could mathematically, not just hypothetically, but mathematically exist, could actually exist. So for people who are not ready for that, well, then fine. But what you explained to me why these eclipses line up perfectly and why the math lines up. I mean, at least, at least accurate to 90 eight to almost 99 percent so there you go we will see what will happen in in the great eclipse we will see why the 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 word why does the word heaven appear in the new testament 139 times two why coincidence i mean it, it's when I remember when when the first sailing ships came to the Americas, the, the the local native people didn't believe what they were seeing because they weren't ready for it. Math has always been able to prove that which we cannot detect and understand and see yet, but eventually, when our our, our ability to detect is sophisticated enough, we eventually see it. Antimatter would be considered a ghost even a hundred years ago it would be considered something completely impossible but we have actual pictures of antimatter electrons so what's going to happen in the eclipse i don't know is this is this a I mean, there's two ways of looking at a coincidence. Is it a is it a fictitious set of coincidences that are all religious that point to Jesus Christ and the Bible? Or is it a coincidence that leads to an actual event? So we'll find out. We'll all find out. That probably when this eclipse happens, it will go on to the news of the next day. That's what you would say the probability is. But what will people experience energetically? I mean, I'm looking at this guy saying peanut butter hogwash. I mean, you just don't understand math. You're just not ready for this. You're not even listening to what I'm saying. So so go away. I mean, you're you're just here to to say that it's all hogwash, but you don't have the math to the antithesis to what I'm saying, right? I mean, someone writes, who cares about John Denver? I mean, where where are people gone? What has happened to you people? What do you mean, who cares about John Denver? I mean, what do you care about? Why are you even here if you don't care? You don't care about Jesus Christ. You don't care about the Bible. You don't care. I've met Jesus Christ in visions, the most beautiful, most powerful being in the universe. I've met him seven times, fallen on my face, Humbled to no end. What's going to happen to you when when you die? You don't believe in John Denver. You don't believe in Jesus Christ. You 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 think I should eat some peanut butter? 
just go away. I mean, amazing, amazing. Maybe somebody brought you in here just to, to, to create smear. Look at the math. Look at the math. Understand the orbit of a planet. You don't understand that our planet goes around the sun every 365.256 days. And you, and, and you take... You take the number 591 divided by the golden ratio, 1.618033987. You don't know what that does? You don't you don't understand, you don't understand math. I mean, it's pretty freaking simple. Look at my calculator. I mean, just look. Use your head. Look. Do the math. Here's what the math looks like. Here's my calculator. 591 divided by the golden ratio, 1.618. 591 divided by 1.618033987. That's Earth exactly. 99.9999% accurate. Divided by the golden ratio again. That's Venus, 99.98% accurate. That's planet 139 divided by the golden ratio again. That's Mercury accurate to almost 89%. So, so that doesn't exist. That's that's hogwash. Well, you just just go back to TikTok and, and do what you were doing. So... This is what um, Wayne Herschel has some interesting point of views. Yeah, I know a lot of people are on to this eclipse. Um, I know a lot of people have. I mean, I've seen I've seen videos where people think there's going to be mass pandemonium and the National Guard's going to be called in. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff. But for me, having met Christ in person multiple times, I believe heaven is a real place. It's a real series of planets. I believe for my wife to call it my name 591 days after she died, divided by the golden ratio, which shows the orbits of all the planets in the solar system and shows invisible positions where, according to the golden ratio, something should be there. I think that's undeniable mathematics. So with that, um, we'll see what happens and um, have, have a great, great evening. Thanks, David.